In this video tutorial we will be investigating the buckling load of a column. There are formulas for investigating uh, pinned columns at both ends and that is simply PC equals pi squared EI over L squared. So L is the whole length of this uh, structure. The column I want to investigate is fully fixed at the bottom and a load applied at the top. So we can still use this formula uh, but instead use L over 2 uh, when we are modeling this. So in terms of calculating the critical uh, buckling load uh, we need to know the Young's modulus, in this case 200 gigapascals, the cross section which is 10 by 20 millimeters and I can calculate the second moment of area uh, on the two axes and on the definition of the beam that we will use in ANSYS uh, these will correspond to IZZ which is uh, bending in, uh, in this direction and IYY which is bending in this direction. Now uh, the first mode of bending will be related to IZZ and we can calculate the critical buckling road in that direction and that is based on uh, this formula and the formula is simply taking the length and in this case we are taking L as uh, 2000 so that it will correspond to 1000 mm high beam with a 10 by 20 mm um, cross-section um, on this beam. So we can take ES 200,000 and IZZ as 1,666 and that calculates as 822 newtons and the critical buckling load in the other plane is calculated as 3,289 uh, newtons. We can now try to create a model of this uh, one meter beam with that specified cross section. So in ANSYS mechanical APDL we'll simply need to specify an element type and that is uh, beam 188. So we'll select beam 188. Okay and in terms of options um, it might help choosing the quadratic form for accuracy close that and this beam will so need some materials uh, we can define the material model as structural linear elastic isotropic and that will be 200,000 for um, Young's modulus and 0.3 for the Poisson ratio and we don't need any other properties really for the buckling analysis. The next property is looking at sections. So for the beam there are a set of common sections and the one we are going to use is a simple rectangle. So we can just call it rectangle 1 and the B and H values are specified as 10 and 20 millimeters. We can preview this so that is 10 by 20 millimeters and we can confirm that the second moment of area are calculated accurately uh, comparing our spreadsheet here. So OK that and uh, next is to create the geometry. So in terms of modeling we'll need to create a couple of key points really as simple as that. Uh, the first key point is going to be at 0, 0, 0 and the second key point will be at 1 meters in the y direction. So I'm modeling in terms of millimeters so that is going to be 1000 millimeters. Press OK and I can do a K plot to show my key points. Um, we can use fit view and we can also use plot controls numbering say key point and line numbers etc to show that the key points are 
created accurately. So the next part is to create a line, a straight line between these two key points. Press OK. And we'll need to mesh this with our um, beam elements. So in terms of mesh attributes, we can uh, select all picked lines, so this line. And we haven't picked an orientation key point for this beam, but we'll look at the cross section and then see um, how we can apply the loads. We can go to mesh tool, and in the mesh tool, we can specify a number of divisions on this line. So element sizes, number of division, say uh, 10 divisions in that one meter length. So let's say OK to that. So when we mesh this, we can I use this raise hidden to bring this dialog again. We can mesh this um, simply by clicking on the line. So you can't see the actual element cross section unless you go to style, um, size and shape, and turn on element shade shape for the display of elements. So now we can see that uh, the element cross section is represented as a 3D uh, display. So these are the elements. The next part is to specify a solution and um, the initial solution that we need for um, buckling analysis is a simple static one. So I'll need to simply apply a 1 Newton load and fix the base of this beam as a static analysis. So define loads, apply structural displacement on key points. So I'll select this key point and press OK. And I'll fix this in all degrees of freedom. And also apply a force on key point at the top. I'll apply a force in the y direction, but this has to be in the negative y to put the column into uh, compression so that we can extract uh, some stresses um, that will go to the buckling analysis. So that's the force is done, and we can simply solve this model. We can go to solve current load step and press OK to solve and it takes a few seconds and we can analyze the results. If you look at first of all read results first set plot results deformed shape with the undeformed on top you can see that the column is being deformed is being compressed accurately as we wanted. We can also look at stress is in the y direction, so y component of stress, and we can see that um, there isn't any stress specified here, um, because these are the beam elements. For the beam elements, we actually need to specify uh, the x component of stress, although this is counterintuitive. So the beams have their own element coordinate system and for the beam the x direction is the axis of the beam. So when we apply the load of minus 1 newtons here and the cross section is 10 by 20 so that is 200 millimeters square so 1 newtons divided by 200 is 0 0.005 uh, newtons per millimeter square so this also checks out that uh, the load and the stress is applied accurately. So we have a model now that can take the compressive load and the problem is if you do a static analysis and if you start increasing this load it can take this load almost indefinitely um, and you will not see a critical uh, buckling load just by doing a static analysis. Um, so first thing we'll try is uh, going to 
a new analysis type and that will be the um, eigenbuckling analysis so the linear buckling uh, solution will be done next what we'll need to do is make sure we choose unabridged menu and that gives us a bit more options when we, spy, uh, when we specify our analysis so we'll need to uh, select a method the default is fine number of mode to extract I think that the first two is the primary ones which are fine and we can say OK and um, in terms of the definition of the loads we don't need to specify um, any loads here because they are coming from um, the loads in the uh, static analysis that we have specified and um, if we go to analysis options here again um, these are all specified fine um, but one thing we need to make sure when we did the uh, static analysis is to apply a pre-stress option to be able to apply the pre-stress effects on we need to do the static solution again so we need to go back to new analysis static and OK in order to pass this compressive stress state to our buckling analysis we need to make sure in solution we specify an analysis option and as long as you are in the unabridged menu you should be able to see analysis options and the thing we need to check here is the p-stress so that will include the pre-stress effects and that will allow us to pass these states to our uh, buckling analysis so I'll repeat the solution with this p-stress effect on so again solve current step and that's done and now I can go to eigenbuckling analysis so with the eigenbuckling analysis we are going to specify analysis options so that number of modes to extract we want to do that two to specify the buckling in, in one plane and the other plane and that's fine and um, in terms of expansion pass we can keep it as default because it will do that automatically and we can simply do solution solution is done so the simple result is um, if you do result summary you'll see that it's got the two modes here the first mode the the time frequency that's specified there 822 that's actually the um, the buckling load factor so it's a multiplier of the load that we applied since we applied minus one newtons the load that will buckle this beam in the x direction is 822 newtons the load to buckle this beam in the z direction is 3289 newtons so we can look at the buckled mode shapes so by doing read results first set plot results deformed shape with undeformed so we can see what's happening here another important option for the beam type elements is to make sure that under the load step options you specify expansion pass, single expand, expand modes and uh, number of modes to expand will be 2 and calculate element results should be ticked as yes so we can then proceed to the solution and simply say solve current load step it's ok, solution is done you can close that, close that and go to general post processor and we can read results um, but before then look at the results summary so the first set is saying that the load factor is 822 that's the multiplier of the load we applied uh, that will buckle the structure using the linear elastic and linear buckling 
theory. And the second one, uh, 3289, that's the result for the second mode of buckling. So it's significantly higher because it's trying to buckle it in the other plane. So we can do first set and look at the results. So we can look at the deformed shape with deformed um, and undeformed structure. Um, if we just look at this as a true scale, it doesn't show much deformation, but we can uh, multiply our uh, displacements. We can do that either through um, the menu system and that will be under displacement scaling so style displacement scaling and we can do that say auto scale calculated or true scale or off and or define a user specified version just keep it say auto calculated and say OK and that shows me that the maximum displacement that's not a real displacement, but simply um, a, a mode shape, um, eigenvector calculated there for the mode shape. So that's about one. Um, and we can look at the second, and we'll see that next set, and the form shape, and that will show that it is buckling in the YZ plane and the factor is 3289. So that now verifies that our uh, simple Excel spreadsheet is uh, giving um, a validation of our buckled mode uh, uh, load factors for mode 1 and mode 2. All the commands that we have done through the menu system can also be simply entered into a notepad as a log file. So the first part here on my log file is to clear the model. The second part going into preprocessor and choosing element type and then defining the beam as a simple 10 by 20 rectangle. And this is defining the material and then the geometry and simply meshing the um, elements. Um, the solution is first the static with the pre-stress effects on and fixing the bottom key point and applying a negative load at the top and then solving. So that creates the results file which I can then uh, look at in post1 post processor plotting the displaced shape. And the next part is looking at the solution again this time using analysis type buckle and I'm asking two modes to be extracted and also this yes specifies the element uh, results should be calculated for the beam type elements um, that will show me the 3D uh, display of these deformed shapes so when this is sold I can go to post1 and set the first uh, result which is the mode shape 1 and the next result which is again mode shape 2 for the buckling. So it is straightforward to simply run this as a um, copy and paste from your text file. So that simply runs the whole thing and the solution is done and we can go back to our log file and we can copy commands for the post processing for example and that shows me the first mode and it is deformed in the right direction I can animate the um, mode shape if I want and press OK So that's buckling in the right direction. And I can copy the next bit and then show the uh, buckled shape in the other direction. And the load factors, etc., are already displayed on this 